In this video, everything you need to know how to replace the clutch on your favorite Nissan Xterra part 1. I'm going to share with you how to remove the gearbox, how to remove the clutch. We'll take you step by step and cover everything you need to know, all details, specs and steps. Don't worry about anything, I will show you what you need to know, pretty much you will be well informed. This is 2000 Nissan Xterra, but same tutorial can be applied to Nissan Frontier. To remove the gearbox and the clutch, we need to have enough room underneath to work and also to pull the gearbox out. And what I did, I drove over the ramps, blocked my wheels, and I lifted the back of the truck with a tractor and put that big block. And now it's secure, it's supported, and it's going not going anywhere. If you have a shop lift, that's awesome. You can put it on jack stands, put on wooden blocks. Just make sure you are safe. This is just an example and demonstration. This is a five-speed standard transmission. Only one you can find on them here we go let's pull the key out and here I turn the light on and we have to do some work under the hood in a cab uh, do those shifters and also we have to work most of the time underneath it's quite a bit of work involved and yep we'll start slowly moving to that point where we can drop the gearbox and let it sit on the ground and get access to the flywheel and clutch pressure plate and remove everything, inspect it, take your flywheel off, send it to the machine shop and do all necessary tests and checks, make sure everything will be reliable and long lasting quite a bit of things to do but we'll start with the basics and let's go and start working under the hood yeah thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions please drop them down in the comment section below and feel free to subscribe very appreciated that and uh, Really nice Nissan, build really good. If you take care of them, they last a long time. Okay, let's go pop the hood. And first thing first, yes, you're right. We need to remove the battery. Actually, we just need to disconnect negative battery terminal. I almost said positive, but no, just a negative. Here we go. There's a V6 uh, Nissan engine and I uh, already got my terminals loose and I just go like this but they're all prepared a little bit for the video. Okay, I disconnected this, now we're safe to work on all electrical components and I have my transmission and transfer case in neutral and now we need to remove the knobs for gear selector and the for transfer case. For removing the knobs, I'm using a strap wrench. It works great. Just place like this over the knob on top and turn it. Here we go. Next thing, we're going to pull this uh, <laughs> leather beauty covers for the shifters with the central console part. And there's uh, just a few Phillips screws on the side. Let's remove them and take all this assembly out. Sweet. Next, we have to remove this uh, metal bracket holding this rubber cover down. There's a few, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, six, ten mil screws. And before we'll get 
those screws removed I will say easy just also remove this bottom uh, ashtray uh, it's not ashtray this bottom panel with a cigarette cigarette lighter and there's only a uh, couple screws 10 millimeter screws one and two in another side and it will give you more room to work on this part of the panel okay let's do those ones nice and easy using our like so and same for another side there you go screws removed and just pop this panel out and uh, yeah just disconnect the electrical the electrical just push the tap in and pull it out very simple okay and put this one aside there you go all 10 millimeters bolts around removed now we can pull this metal bracket with uh, our rubber seal for the shifters so don't forget to put those uh, rubber o-rings back when you're installing the knobs and covers back and We'll get that last boot pulled out and uh, cut that plastic zip tie. Just make sure everything's clean and nothing will get inside the gearbox. Let's just use a compressor and clean everything. Snap ring pliers. We'll remove this the snap ring. Here we go. Nice and easy. Well, be careful, make sure it won't fly away. We're ready to pop our shifter out. There you go, pull it out like this and yeah, placed in our container. I keep everything intact like that and then you won't miss anything. See the old transmission with the fork attached and uh, yep, that's why I said we should clean it and make sure nothing will get in, put a rag in a hole like this and then keep it from getting any dirt inside okay that should do it now we are going to undo some bolts holding this shifter 12 millimeters wrench and we have one two as you can see here and three and uh, four four bolts to remove and let's take this uh, bracket off first and then undo those bottom ones and this whole assembly should come out remember we shifted to neutral let's put it forward and let's place it in four high okay and we'll have a better access and want any want to have any pressure on this bracket yeah i will remove those bolts Break them loose like so, and um, yeah, wrenching process is easy. I don't want to make this video too too long. I just will kind of try to make it more informative and efficient, straight to the point. There's uh, two upper bolts removed. Let's pull this plate. I recommend to keep all fasteners and the bolts nuts all together and you won't ever have a problem which bolt came from where. Like this, put it in a holes and put it in a container. That's the last bolt to remove and as you can see I can reach those bolts from the top and you don't need to go underneath the vehicle to get access to those bolts. Give yourself much room as you need to get to those bottom bolts and you can shift the transfer case wherever you position want. That's four high, no, two high, four high, neutral and four low. I will put a neutral for now and that way we have nothing engaged. Same with our 
shifter for the gearbox, same in neutral. Okay, now we're going underneath to undo the linkages. So we're using 14 millimeters wrench to disconnect the linkage from the shifter arm at the transfer case. Just get that nut out. Bolt is almost out. Let's get it done there and I'll the pull the transfer case shifter assembly like this will come out of let's get a better view for you. Oh here we go. See? And it's out. And now we can chill it. Here we go. Oh door to phone. It's why always good to use the safety goggles. Okay, this is our guy. And we remove it. There we go. Nice and easy. All right. Next, uh, we are going to remove the clutch slave cylinder. We're using a 14 millimeter socket for upper bolt and 14 mil wrench for this guy. And yeah, we don't need to disconnect the hydraulic line. We just need to undo those two bolts. It's the last bolt. And uh, yeah. If you have any questions, please ask down in the comment section below. And if it will help someone, that will be awesome. That's uh, our goal. Okay, you just uh, pull it out like this. And yeah, it just can hang like this and put it aside. Next part, what we're going to remove will be the starter. And I like to give myself a little bit extra room. And here's a bracket for the slave cylinder hydraulic line. Just undo that bolt. I found a quarter inch ratchet with a 12 mil socket is the best. There you go. As soon as you get your ratchet, that's the way you can do it. Not much room, but it's enough to get it out. Yeah, now you know. Bracket is removed, pull the bolt out, and we have plenty of room. As you can see, all the dirt is still falling, even if it's not too dirty, but it's still falling into my face. And I would recommend you to use a safety goggles, make sure nothing will get into your eyes. We need 12 millimeters wrench for I'm doing that upper bolt at the starter solenoid that's a thick wire coming down to the starter from the battery you don't need to remove the bottom one just undo the top one with a wrench break it loose and you can get the nut out by hand and uh, yeah that should be it and uh, to give myself a little extra room i put my slave cylinder over here and it's not on my way and it's giving me enough space bolt on a transmission bell housing holding the starter it's over here as you can see it's going through the bell housing into the starter body and we're using 14 mil socket short extension and this is three eighths ratchet this is the best combo and here we go break it loose this is a first bolt let's get that guy out for uh, your notice all bell housing bolts are different length and there are a bunch of them and i will include in a video bell housing bolt pattern with the length and then you don't need to worry about which bolt came from where you just measure them and put in the right place and you can also keep them in sequence but that's whatever works best for you but this is our first bolt removed from the bell housing. Okay, put it in a container. Okay, and our vehicle uh, seems like this one is missing. Probably it might be on yours, but there's nothing here. Okay, we we'll removed the upper one. This one wasn't there. And uh, now I'm removing this bolt from inside using the 14 mil deep socket with a 
couple extensions long enough to get it with my ratchet past the axle okay and uh, now it's all easy to turn i got a bolt out removed oh here we go and now we got a starter out and yeah here we go Ooh. Uh, clutch material okay you don't have to remove the starter completely just uh, pull it back like that and that's enough and uh, we can get access to this upper bolt started motor like this and you have a plenty of room to get to that upper bolt and this one we already removed from the side good reason why we removed that uh, thick uh, cable from the battery to the starter because it gives us more room and flexibility to put a starter in a position we need otherwise that cable will be so rigid and it's hard to make it fit like we just did when you remove the shaft you need to be really careful with the seal make sure you won't rest the splines on the seal and be careful pulling it out a little bit of oil might come out and okay put the matching marks on the flanges and then separate the impeller shaft from the final drive let's just make a mark here with a red paint marker that will be our reference okay i can see all good i'm using, I'm using 17 mil wrench and uh, my impact is a 17 mil socket and a swivel there we go nice and easy my reflection thinking about what you mentioned it was supposed to be the one to take every last pain away nothing on our loving maybe time told us that we were different did it break you down staring at the ceiling but the oil will come out from there and of the transmission where the splines are and for that i have a container put over there and as a plug i will use the clean rag actually this is a sock okay and uh, now we need to separate it the shaft our impeller shaft that should be good Too bad. Don't dress the shaft on the seal. Carefully pull it out and support it. It'll come out. Yeah. Here we go. We got it. Oh. As I said, a little oil. Catch that. And yeah. Good enough. Let's get this shaft out of the way. And now we can, as you can see, oh, just a, yeah. put a plug like this. That's enough. I will hold and uh, we'll replace the gear oil anyway, just for now, and I will clean it when we'll get the gearbox out. Good. Same thing for the front. Put the matching marks on the flanges. The transmission. There we go. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. And at the final drive. Put it on the flange. Marks are invisible, and we'll put it in the same way. Well balanced. Okay, that's good. Marks for removing the front impeller shaft. We need a pry bar to 
walk it first from spinning just put it like this at the front and we just need one 14 millimeter wrench because those uh, bolt heads they set just against the yoke and the same way you remove one two three four Okay, we one bolt attached. We still need this side to be bolted to the flange. And we we'll go and do the same thing what we did at the front. And just to hold it with the right bar. You can spray a little bit of penetrating oil, let it soak, or use a WD-40, we'll do the job, and then, yeah, might work better. All eight bolts removed, now we're ready to pull the drive shaft. Next thing, we need to disconnect the, and remove downstream oxygen sensor. On the driver's side and uh, as you can see the wiring is going up under the hood and remove the sensor and then we can get access to the crankshaft positioning sensor which is uh, right there right at the top of the bell housing okay let's go and disconnect this guy from the plug it on top of the engine okay yeah, it's interesting work, actually. I like it. Not too bad. Let's pop the hood. Okay, and show you where that connector to the sensor. Okay, it's connected all sensors, as you can see. Two at the top over here. Work together, one with the blue, one is with the red sleeve, and one is here with the gray and it's just hanging here this is his connector is over here and just keep them separate okay now we should be good to go and remove the downstream sensor red sleeve and on this side is gray okay that's uh, a little bit WD-40 Let's spray a little penetrating oil. It should come out. It should do it. Not a problem. Oh, good. Okay, let's spray more here. Spray dry. The sensor is removed. Now we have lots of room. Uh, we'll put it back later. Downstream oxygen sensor is removed and up at the top of the bell housing is crankshaft position sensor. As you can see, my 10 millimeter wrench is on top of that bolt, which is holding the sensor. And we need to take that bolt and pull the sensor out. Otherwise, if you will forget about it, when you will keep pulling the transmission out, the gearbox will break the sensor. And uh, you don't want that habit. Let's remove that bolt and pull the sensor out. And yeah, you can disconnect it if you want. I'll just let it hang. Okay. Pretty tight spot, but you can see where is it located. Yeah, I will go there with my hand and do the magic. There's the bolt. <sighs> Got it. Nice. Let's see. There is a sensor. I pull it out. There's the sensor. As you can see, this guy 
Uh, yeah, you need to pull this one out. Power to the gearbox removal. This is a crankshaft position sensor on Xterras. This sensor is not responsible for ignition timing. Uh, for the tachometer, this one only for some uh, diagnostics. And uh, yep, this is a sensor. Hopefully, if I clean it, we're dirty. And uh, yeah, if you need to replace the sensor, you pull it out and then disconnect it. Because, yeah, otherwise you need to have tiny, tiny hands. Okay, we got that one. Good job. Spray the penetration oil on exhaust bolts. We need to remove this Y shape pipe. Soak a bit. That should be good. That should be good. My favorite job: remove the exhaust pipes. It's not bad. This truck, and uh, we have flange. One, two, two bolts. One. There's a one, two, another two bolts. Another flange. Three flanges and over here one two four, six bolts in total and three flanges let's take this pipe off and then we have a torsion bars this cross and uh, that one my electrical around the transmission i will get that one too next we're going to remove the torsion bar mount and a torsion bar spring it's so one on each side as example i will show you on one side and you will go and do the same thing on another side as well okay pull a dust boot like so paint the matching marks on the torsion bar spring over here and another one and there's no connection And there's a, on a connecting rod, like so. Same thing on this side. It's our reference. Yeah, and we're going to do the same thing on a driver's side. Measure anchor bolt protrusion from the bottom here to the top. And remove the lock nut, this upper one, and adjustment nut. Let's measure the bolt. Okay, my measurement is 56, 7, 57, 58. Yeah, 58 millimeters. Good. Let's write it down. Okay, 58. It. Put it on this side and let's do the same on the passenger side for that anchor bolt. Okay, for losing that uh, lock nut, we need two 19 mil wrenches. Go with the first one on adjustment nut, like this. Get it. Wedged against the bolt, and with the second one, we're going to turn. Remove adjustment parts. Hold out. Good. Washer. Put it back like this. Same on this side. 
pretty loud, use air muffs. Be careful, not as hot. Okay, good. Let's... There you go. They pay attention to the nuts. And then adjust their nuts, it's thicker. And uh, and uh, here's our lock nut. There you go. This is our beauty. Two foot 10 millimeter bolts to remove. Uh, 22 mil nut to remove. We're using a 22 mil socket and a swivel. That guy. Separate the torsion bar from the bracket. It should come up. There we go. All good. 17 mil wrench and a socket to remove the mountain bracket bolts. There's a two on each side. It was supposed to be the one to take every last pain away. Nothing on our loving. Maybe time told us that we were different. Didn't break you down. Just leave that bolt in for now and we're going to remove the same nut and bolt on another side. All bolts. Okay, just remove the last bolt. Okay, last bolt out. Now I need to use a pry bar. Here's a one very useful tip, keep all bolts and nuts together, it really will save you time during the assembly. As you can see, I always put them back. Here's our torsion bars, bracket, and I put everything back like it came. Same thing, you see all mounting bolts all together. And reason why we mark, because if this one will pop, make sure they have the marks and we'll put in the same position. My favorite part, exhaust pipes. Okay, for this flange, it's 17 on my truck. Okay, then we're going here. This is 13 and we need to undo the bracket for this white pipe. We're removing the white pipe and 12 mil. Okay, let's roll all those bolts and nuts and so it should be good. All bolts and nuts are removed. Let's pull the Y pipe out. Should be nice and easy. There we go. This is our Y pipe. It's always good to replace the exhaust pipe gaskets. This one's seen the better days and is not good anymore. Next, let's drain the oil from the gearbox and the transfer case. I have my drain pan underneath and we need half inch braking bar with a square. Okay, this let's here we go. Let's make a couple turns till it's free. And now we can pull this plug out and make sure you have a drain container underneath well, it's always good to keep your fluids clean okay i'm just out of threads almost pushing up and 
take it out. Click it. Here we go. Woo! Look at the dirty oil. Get oil. We'll put in good, clean oil. Let's inspect the magnet. As you can see, we have a little bit of filing. I mean, this uh, gear oil hasn't been changed probably for uh, 80,000, something like that. That's not too bad. Okay, we'll clean the drain plug and put it back. Gear oil almost drained completely. And one important tip before you will take that drain plug off, make sure you lose that filler plug. Sometimes it's going to be hard to take them off or that square could be stripped and see, I got mine loose and I will leave it like this and it will remind me to put the fresh gear oil. Okay, and I have some Teflon tape on the threads to seal the threads and clean the magnet. Now I can put it back and start it dripping. And it's all out. Okay, let's put it back and tie it with a ratchet. Just stop. Just give it a good quarter turn and it should be enough. There we go. That's that's enough. It won't leak and yep. Now we need to do the same thing for the transfer case. Nice and tight, good enough. There is an electrical harness and some connectors at the top of the transmission. We need to disconnect the... those ones at the top. They're different shape and size. You can just disconnect them. They should be fine. And those ones at the back are your... are here. And they're all the same shape and same size. And I just mark them one, one, three, three, and two, two. And that way I will not have any issues to connect them back. If you want to know which switch is which, yeah, let drop your comments and I will tell you exactly what it is. Okay. All, the, all those three connectors marked on both sides, how you undo them, you use the pick and you pry this part up on a male side so it's hard to film here because it's very not enough room we pry this one up and here's a little notch and will come apart like this see and then pull it out i spray wd-40 let it soak and then i also broke them loose like this and they will come out they're dirty and dry it's hard to separate them but make sure you mark all of them and we'll put in the same way and with this one it's pretty much the same thing you see this little tab right here and you need to pry this guy up and pull it out yeah that's where you do it yeah it's can be a little bit too hard but take your time don't break the clips and it will come out just tap it and spray wd-40 and carefully pry it out and we'll do it you can do it okay our connectors are disconnected let's undo this clip and pull the harness down like so one and we have another one over here let's pull this guy too and that way we don't have anything attached see dirt is falling that's why it's good to have the safety goggles 
There we go. Now we're all free. And yeah, it's all hanging down. So here's three. We have numbers one. There's a number two. Yep, all good. Here's three. Number two here. Yep, we have all connectors. Good. Okay. And uh, yeah, to the top. If you run a into the issue with the connecting the wires and things just ask down in comments below I will help you because I have a wire and diagram there is a different colors and you just match the colors and you should be good and yep no problem we'll get it solved okay the electrical disconnected now we will get our transmission jack radio up here and we will put a strap across that tail of the transmission get it supported there and uh, then we can take those two wall two nuts and uh, have a support here support over there and take this bracket okay there's a few bolts but we will get there let's go and eat a supper I'm hungry <laughs> rare transmission number is still in place and next step we're going to to remove the bolts, bolts from the transmission to the engine and from the engine to transmission. All right, that's our next step. And here's a picture of it, how many bolts we need to remove. And as you can see, there is a, some bolts from the manual transmission to the engine and some from the engine to the manual transmission. And we have one, two, three, four, five, five bolts from the transmission to the engine and we have engine two manual transmission one two three four four bolts those bolts are different length as you can see the numbers one two three and here's the all data we need to know and it will help once with the installation but we'll get back to those torque specs and bolts size length in the part two when we'll be ready to install the gear box back okay let's go to remove those bolts i will show you what tools and how to reach them yeah okay all right this first bolt from the engine to the transmission over here we removed when we were doing the starter okay let's move clockwise and we see another one on this side but 10 millimeters with a 3 8 ratchet this will do it on loose here we go. okay here we go one bolt okay next one is uh, from the engine to transmission okay we're going here and as you can see there's a bolt same ratchet and 14 millimeter deep socket. That will do it. Okay, let's break it loose. There we go. And it's another one. Next one for us will be over here. That guy on the side of the gearbox from the transmission to the engine. And for removing that bolt, using the same setup and extension that way we can get to that bolt bring this one loose good yeah other vehicles let me know here we go all right we're going higher and higher and next bolt is a ball that we removed and as you can see it's over there all right i have my 14 mil dip socket extension and another extension and a ratchet that way i can reach the guy and break it loose okay another one removed i was trying to avoid removing this downstream exhaust pipe on the passenger side but we don't have much room to get to the upper transmission bolt and we need to remove this guy and I have my downstream oxygen sensor 
disconnected already. And as you can see, there's a uh, three 14 mil nuts. Let's undo those guys. I will break them loose with a breaking bar and, and undo it. Oh, my favorite exhaust work. Okay, after 10 minutes, we have this down pipe removed. As a couple of studs came out on the catalytic converter, I need to replace those ones, and one is still there. All right, but this is a secondary. Now we have room to get up to those upper bolts. All right, another bolt from the engine to transmission on the side just above the starter. We can get there with the 14 mil shallow socket and yeah, like so. Okay, you got it. Another bolt is out. If you look from the side where the slave cylinder, there's a one bolt we removed with the starter and there is a second bolt just above that catalytic converter. You can see it from here. I hope so. Yeah, over there. Here we go. That bolt. To remove that bolt, we need a 14 mil socket, swivel, extension, and ratchet. This way you can get to that bolt. As you can see over here, I hope it's just good on camera. I have wrapped electrical tape around my swivel, make sure it stay in a desired direction. Okay, let's put it. Oh, here we go. I have my socket over the bolt. And now I can turn and break it loose. Okay, let's break it loose. There you go. Nice. We have a bolt out and it's coming, coming out. Oh, okay. Another bolt removed. Container and we have only two bolts at the very top. All right, only two upper bolts left and uh, there is no room to get to them and I show you the way to get them out easy. Okay, I already put a strap from one side to another to support the back of the transmission because transmission is quite long and it has a transfer case attached and we need to support the back as well. There's the tail side and this is for the back and we will put the transmission jack at the front over here we are ready everything's set up as you can see i made a v block uh, that really works well on transmissions and that instead of just lay laying transmission on a metal plate with those uh, l-shaped brackets works so good and uh, yep yeah, we'll get the job done We'll put it over here to support the front and then we'll remove those two nuts. There's a one, two, three, four nuts to remove and then we can undo this cross member of the transmission and just before you remove this you have to put the jack and support the transmission. Let's do that. Let's set a jack in place. There we go. And let's go up. Yeah, you need to find one of these oh, the transmission jacks. Otherwise, it could be really, really hard to do this job. Well, you might be able to find a ways around, but. Yeah, and get yourself a jack. Put a chain around the transmission. Put in mill socket. Remove those two nuts. There you go, one. And two. That's good. S 
17 mil socket to remove the member bracket bolts. All the bolt with a 17 mil socket on another side because it started to spin. Yeah, there it is. Okay, those two removed, and I have a couple more on that side. All right, last uh, bolt was removed. Now our transmission all is supported by the jack and the strap. And let's remove this bracket. There we go. Good. Our beloved Xterra is getting close to get a new clutch, and transmission is supported by the hydraulic transmission jack and a strap. And now we have to lower transmission inch inch and a half down and get room to access those upper mounting bolts okay i'm going to turn the valve open a bit and lower it down you don't need to go too far just just like so good okay now we're as you can see we're lower as we were before and we have a room nice now we have more room than we even can imagine. Lots of room and there's a bolt over there. It's hard to see probably with the camera, but at the end there's a bolt. Let's see, try to bring a light there. Okay. Yeah, right there. There's a bolt. And our setup is uh, 14 mil, deep socket, swivel, and extension we're using this time half inch and that will do okay let's get this guy put on a bolt there we go she's coming she's coming yeah. okay oh here we go this is one upper transmission mounting bolt transmission to the engine on the driver's side. We got it. If I can do it, you guys can do it too. Okay, same way as we removed the bolt on the driver's side, that upper transmission bolt, the transmission to the engine, and the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, I had another extension and it's turning and the bolt is coming out. Okay, broken loose. And yeah, one extra extension. Uh, and it's just easy for me to turn the bolt, okay? And there by hand and remove the bolt. Okay, this is the last one. Oof. As you can see from here, it's already separated. It's split from the engine all the way around. That means we remove all bolts. And it's yeah, that's what you want to see. Look here. Yeah, all bolts removed. And now we have to. Okay, there's a light is on this side. Let's just turn it. Yeah, we have to pull that trans gearbox back and pull it out completely from the pilot bearing and uh, then uh, lower our strap a little bit and lower jack. Oh. Hold out first, don't go under this. There you go. Let's just pull out from the engine. Right. As you, can, as you can see, my transmission is almost ready to go down. And uh, we have to go on that side and pry it out with a pry bar. That's why you need to put that strap. And uh, yeah, that way you're safe. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Just never ever go under the transmission because it can be bad. Okay, idea is to pry the housing on the pressure plate, as you can see. Just uh, use a pry bar and pry it out. And as soon as it will move further away, you can load down the front of the transmission or the bell housing and low down and then take it down the back. 
<laughs> All right, I added another strap over here that hooked up to the running board bracket and wrapped around the tail of the transmission and one over there, another hook. And now I can take the first strap off and that way we'll have the more swing room to pull the transmission completely out because it needs to go more backwards. We'll do that. Carefully. There we go. See, the strap is I still left attached, and it's nicely going down. Okay. Okay. See, this one is holding, and our transmission perfectly landed on a jack, and it's still supported. Yeah. <laughs> Oh well guys, this is how you drop the transmission on Nissan Xterra Frontier. Okay, we need to yeah pull the transmission away and uh, now time for the pressure plate. That's what we want to do, it's on the wheels, it's moving, yeah look at that V-block, it's working perfectly fine, yeah this is the way to do it I think. And yeah, let's push this bad boy. Okay, this is far as it can go. And it can stay here. Yeah. Oh. This is how you drop the transmission, aka gearbox, on Nissan Xterra right here and get access to the pressure plate. And there's only a few bolts around, and you will pull the pressure plate out. I like always put a reference mark. Then I can take a closer look and uh, put it on a bench and see how it was wearing out. Okay, just, yeah, but it's not necessary. Millimeter socket to remove one, two, three, four, five, six bolts holding the pressure plate to the flywheel. I'm gonna hold it with one hand. You don't want the guy to fall. Okay. Yeah, maybe some material will come out. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh. I don't breathe that stuff. It's a clutch. Look the clutch. Oh. Now you remove it. I see some overheating points. We'll put a new flywheel new bolts, inspect everything, but if you look closer, you see the lots of overheating was happening to the flywheel. You see those blue heat marks, one, two, three, four, five, means clutch was working hard and it's probably slipping. I like those even bolts, they have some scoring, this is scratches. Thank you so much for watching guys and stay around for part 2 clutch gearbox installation. If you have any questions please drop them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, thank you so much for doing that. Stay safe, see you soon and bye bye now.